This is the original bricks of the house and when Marc Chagall lived, the main entrance, and that's where the shop was. Uh, so that's where the people were coming in. Now, the family was going from the backyard. Again, very typical architect style of that period. One interesting fact is that you see the corners of the house is rounded. So if the people would carry anything, they wouldn't break anything um, on the corner of the, of the building. Yes, cooking. and of course the Jewish mother. Uh, it's uh, a copy of Marc Chagall's work, uh, the mother, and uh, from private collection. But we can see this world of a small boy, a great, like himself, he told once, queen, great queen, the mother, and uh, a small image of the father. Uh, mm. Why small? Not because this was not respected. Uh, Marc Chagall, he respected a lot his father, but for him the father it was like a stranger who is going for praying, who is going to the synagogue. So he didn't understand the meaning of the, of the yes. father in the family, right? Because yes. he was away all the time. Yes. So see, the woman was a leading role in the, uh, in the house. Why so have to stand up like this? <laughs> so being very small. What, what is this? In fact, we can see this for the coffee. So we ah, can suppose that Marc Chagall's family, grinder. it was really a middle class family. Okay, so like they were... Chagall himself, he wrote, uh, I had bread and butter each day. And for Vitebsk, for this small town in the Pale of Settlement, it was When there was a poverty, yeah. Good. Yeah, so they were a middle class. So. I would love to have a coffee with Marc Chagall, so we would try the coffee and then we would have a coffee, a cup of coffee with a bread and butter. Great, so and this? To make and bread, this? Uh, to take off the oven, this bread, uh, it was this okay, is okay, in okay. wood, to bring okay. water to the house. So we had a very typical, very typical thing for Vitebsk, literally. To bring a lot of water and of course boys so was like mark chagall doing mark this so mark chagall was bringing the water yes. ah, and his brother With his brother okay they brought water okay so that's that's what the man did you know they were bringing the water and drinking coffee <laughs> this photo of mark chagall's parents was taken here near the house. Figa Ita and Hatske Chagall. Uh, they were born in Lozno, a very small town near Vitebsk. And after their marriage, they moved to Vitebsk. This family had nine children. Here, Mark and David, his brother. Uh, David died at a very young age. Uh, he had tuberculosis mm -hmm. and Marc Chagall remembered him all his life and after he named his son after David. After his brother. Here we can see a copy of one of Marc Chagall's works. We can see a very... He was making some mistakes. Ah. But not a lot. Not a lot. Just like me. <laughs> yes, uh, but we can see also his handwritten very beautiful. Uh, we can remember that after Marc Chagall became a great graphic artist. Marc Chagall himself mm -hmm. uh, remembered that uh, he tried to draw something, uh, to copy something from journals, from magazines, and uh, some people told him, but it's very beautiful, you're a real artist. And after this... So he, he had passed. this... Okay, yes. so he was fond of, of drawing. ...to study in St. Petersburg. There he changed different institutions. Different artists, different teachers. 
uh, like Leon Baxt, for example, his favorite teacher. And uh, Leon Baxt remembered, Mark Chagall was my favorite student. He was very attentive, he asked questions, but he was doing everything his own way. <laughs> So tell us what this room, so this is just right near the uh, main entrance uh, of the house. What was this room used for? Uh, you can see uh, that it's reconstructed. Uh, it was a small grocery shop, so small, but uh, the mother uh, was selling here different goods, like herrings, of course, fish. Uh, wheat, uh, milk, uh, mm -hmm. uh, even beer in bottles. Uh, all these objects are from the time, from the beginning of 20th century, from 19th century. But of course, the interior of this room is reconstructed. So this was the business of the family. That's how they were making their money. Yes, yes. Was Mark was Mark uh, helping the mother uh, around uh, the uh, business? Not, uh, not really. Uh, just only for simple things to carry something mm -hmm. but not really helped with the business just because in this family uh, they decided that uh, he's talented and uh, they believed in his talent mm -hmm. to study uh, to try to start another life so parents believed in him yes. so that's why they didn't involve him into everyday sort of com yes. commerce they just uh, pushed him to develop his talent yes and it was great, this understanding. From well, we know, we know they were right. <laughs> yes. And we've got Marc Chagall. So this is basically the room where all the money were made. And great, 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 great. Here that there is a, a famous painting, Fiddler on the Roof. Right? Yes, in why, fact, why, it's, a why sketch. It's, it's a sketch for the future painting. Right. Uh, the death, uh, the death uh, which is now in Georges Pompidou Centre in Paris. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the sketch we can see this character, the fiddler on the roof. It was inspired by the grandfather. Uh, uh, Mark Chagall right. remembered. Uh, my grandfather was a little bit strange and he liked to climb the roof, uh, to sit there, uh, to eat some carrots and uh, to see the horizon, to see the nature and uh, not to be involved in uh, different uh, affairs affairs in the house <laughs> yes. so that's where it comes fiddler on the roof the grandfather who who climbed on the roof and who was sitting there observing the city having some food so he was having fun that's like going to the movie and eating popcorn great okay now we know where he's taking from <laughs> here a portrait of Guillaume Apollinaire. Mm -hmm. uh, he was poet but he was also a great art critic and he gave to Marc Chagall this recommendation to the art, art world. He wrote articles about him and the uh, first solo exhibition was held in Berlin in 1914. Uh, the catalogue was made by Guillaume Apollinaire and uh, this exhibition was organized by uh, Herbert Walden. So he believed in Marc Chagall. Yes. Did Marc Chagall come back from Paris? Was it uh, here? Yes, of course, just because only one main reason, his bride was waiting for him. Ah, his bride, okay. Who uh, was his bride? Tell us more. It was a beautiful uh, and very clever, very wise girl, Bella Rosenfeld. So it was a wealthy family. How did they take Marc Chagall? Because uh, Marc Chagall wasn't from the same yes, sort of level. Yes, Firstly, they were never agree. But Bella uh, told that she will be waiting for Marc. Uh -huh. And she waited almost for five years. Tell us how, how has Marc uh, Chagall survived the Holocaust, the war? 
uh, during the war, Marc Chagall was in France, firstly, and he was a little bit naive. Uh, he told, I am a French citizen now, so I will not be killed, I am not in danger. Uh, but very soon he was arrested and uh, uh, he was liberated only with the help of different friends, uh, high placed friends and uh, just American services uh, like Warren Fry, uh, Harry Bingham, they helped him to escape occupied France mm -hmm. and to go to the United States. So in 1941, Marc Chagall's family went to New York. It was very good, he became famous in America, but at the same time, it was very tragical. He knew everything about what is happening in Europe. And Bella Chagall became very sick and she died very quickly in several days. It was not possible to make something. Marc Chagall could not uh, practice even his adored art during almost a year. I know that Marc Chagall was also, he also has written uh, a poem in Yiddish. Yes, yes. He wrote a lot of poems, uh, generally in Yiddish. Uh, only some very early poems were in Russian and some very late poems were in French, uh, in French uh, but generally it was always in Yiddish. Was, uh, was Chagall's family religious? Was he a religious person? And there is some um, sort of rumors that he was a uh, quite uh, a uh, humorous and funny guy and he had made jokes in his book about his father and about actually the Shabbats that were happening in the family. Give us a few bits of it. Yes, of course. Um, it was a very religious family and uh, especially the father, very religious person. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mark Chagall respected this, but at the same time he was very humorous and uh, a little bit sarcastic even. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, like he describes Shabbat in the family, uh, what was happening? He writes, uh, the father started to pray. He was reading a prayer and it was long. And each time at the same place, father was falling asleep. <laughs> Can you tell us and throw some light onto the legend where um, it says that it tells us a story of Bella presenting a flowers, a cornflowers to uh, Mark uh, on his anniversary, and that after that present, the favorite color of Mark Chagall everywhere on his paintings, on his work, was after the corn cornflower. Uh, of course, it's a very famous legend. It's true and it's not true because we know. Uh, there is a famous picture by Chagall, anniversary, uh, where we see uh, lovers and uh, Bella, who is holding a beautiful flower. But it's not cornflowers. In fact, it's different. It's very different flowers. And uh, Bella herself writes in her book Berlin Light, uh, it was your anniversary and I wanted to give you flowers. So I picked some flowers and I presented you and you start to 